Okay, most of you know who Shock of God is. Uh, he presents 15 questions, which I will answer. These questions um, had, some un had some explanations underneath them, most of which contain quote mining. Some of these questions are valid, uh, but others are blatant strawmen. It's not as though these questions haven't been answered before many times, but I will take the time to answer them. After all, we evolutionists are constantly bombarded with challenges from those mean creationist scoffers, so we must defend our fragile faith. Uh, so here goes. The first question, how did life originate? Abiogenesis. Uh, that's not an evolution question, it's just, uh, you know, what came before evolution. Uh, the second question, how did the DNA code originate? It's unlikely that the first organisms used DNA. Complex proteins and other chemicals eventually gave rise to RNA and from RNA to DNA. Uh, the exact mechanisms of how the code originate is still being studied. Third question. How could mutations, accidental copying mistakes, uh, DNA letters exchanged, deleted or added, um, genes duplicated, chromosome inversions, etc., create the huge volumes of information in the DNA of living things. Okay, not all mutations add information to the DNA. Some mutations subtract information. Also, simulations have shown that mutation and selection is observed to increase complexity and information. Fourth question. Why is natural selection a principle recognized by creationists um, taught as evolution as if, it as, as if it explains the origin and diversity of life. Okay, when populations are separated by some natural barrier, differences in environment will select the best individuals fit for their particular environment over many generations. This makes perfect sense in light of evolution um, and the diversity of life, and it makes no sense in light of creations. Fifth question, how did new biochemical pathways which involve multiple enzymes working together in sequence originate? Okay, now here's an example of a complexity argument. Uh, I won't go through all the details, but there have been some studies showing how biochemical pathways in prokaryotes can be traced backward through evolutionary time. Those journals are listed in the low bar. Sixth question. Living things look like they were designed, so how do evolutionists know that they were not designed? Appearance of design does not imply design. If you were to look at the anatomy of any vertebrate, you will likely find vestigial structures or other structures that do not serve a purpose. In other vertebrate species, however, the same structures do serve a purpose. Some structures, such as the uh, laryngeal nerve, uh, could not have been intelligently designed. Design arguments are based on ignorance of biological processes. Seventh question. How did multicellular life originate? Okay, there are many ways. For instance, it may have started with colonies of single-celled organisms. Even today, we see such colonies and species such as Volvox. Uh, the eighth question, how did sex originate? There are a wide variety of life cycles, and it's not just a matter of being sexual or asexual. Many intermediate stages exist. A gradual origin with steps favored by natural selection is likely. The first steps involve single-celled organisms exchanging genetic material. They don't need to be distinct sexes. Males and females most likely would not evolve independently. Sex depends on the actions of both male and female. Genes causing sterility and other reproductive problems would rapidly be selected against by natural selection. Ninth question. Why are the expected countless millions of transitional fossils missing? We do not expect to find countless millions of transitional fossils, but we do have many, and enough to serve as excellent evidence for evolution. First of all, Fossilization is not a common event. Secondly, some processes, such as erosion, destroys fossils. 
Thirdly, fossil discovery is rare because we only find fossils exposed by recent erosion. If fossilization were so prevalent and young earth creationism were true, we should find indications in the fossil record of animals migrating from the ark to other continents. Tenth question. How do living fossils remain unchanged over supposed hundreds of millions of years if evolution has changed worms into humans the same time frame? Alright, organisms are not always expected to evolve morphologically. In a stable environment, stabilizing selection will keep organisms unchanged. There are many environments today that are not much different than those of millions of years ago. This is especially true of marine environments, and indeed most living fossils are marine. Some species evolve in ways that are not obvious. For instance, modern horseshoe crabs were quite different from horseshoe crabs from millions of years ago. Eleventh question. How did blind chemistry create mind, intelligence, meaning, altruism, and morality? There have been several papers written on the subject of how morality, altruism, and other complex traits could have evolved. Some of these papers are listed in the low bar. Twelfth question. Why is evolutionary just-so storytelling to tolerated? All right, no storytelling is used. No observation in biology contradicts evidence for evolution. The thirteenth question. Where are the scientific breakthroughs due to evolution? There are many breakthroughs. Evolutionary theory has been put to practical use in areas such as bioinformatics, disease resistance, fisheries, artificial selection, public health, species conservation, and many more uses. Fourteenth question. Science involves experimenting to figure out how things work, how they operate. Why is evolution, a theory about history, taught as if it were the same as operational science? Evolution is not a theory about history. Okay? It is the study of change in allele frequency in a population over time. Fifteenth question, and, and final question. Why is a fundamentally religious idea, a dogmatic belief system that fails to explain the evidence, taught in science classes? This question is a major straw man and a projection. Creationism is based on a fundamentally religious idea, and it fails to explain the evidence. It is based merely on an untestable claim of divine revelation and not evidence. Evolution is not based on a claim of divine revelation, but it is supported by evidence. That's why it should be taught in science classes. And creationism does not belong in science classes. It belongs in the Dark Ages, alongside witch hunts and slavery. Okay, that was it. In, in case you were wondering what's in the cage back here, that uh, I have a pair of Degus. Uh, if you're wondering what a Degu is, look it up. D-E-G-U. Um, also, I, I also have a Richardson ground squirrel with me right here. A distant relative, because they're both rodents. Uh, Degus and uh, Richardson ground squirrels uh, probably have separated, um, you know, close to... Uh, after after a time the dinosaurs got went extinct you know they're they're actually very distantly related even though they're both rodents uh, probably split like some 60 million years ago anyway um and that that would that that was it